Um, pleasure to be here. For those of you that haven't had a chance to meet me yet, I'm Kat Kennedy. I'm the Chief Product Officer at Degreed, and I am overjoyed to be able to introduce two of um, our incredible partners from Unilever, Tim Munden, who is the Chief Learning Officer, and Maria Klimova, who is the, man the Digital Learning and User Experience Manager. So please join me in welcoming them to the stage. Yeah, shake your hand. <laughs> so thank you so much for joining us today. And um, I have you know, said this to many people, but the best part of my job is getting to spend time with people like yourselves. And you know, we've been working with you for a couple of years. And I think it would be helpful for everyone to know just what life looked like in regards to learning at Unilever you know, five years ago. And then we'll talk to how things have evolved since then. Well, thank you very much for having us here. We really like it. And we, we've traveled away to be here. And it's been a really, really cool use of time. So thank you. Um, so five years ago, I think um, learning in Unilever was very fragmented. So we had one team of people who were looking after leadership skills. We had a different group outsourced looking after general skills. All the academies did their own thing. And the technology was just as fractured. So the user experience wasn't great. There were some real bright pockets, of course, of people doing great work. Mm -hmm. But overall, it wasn't kind of coming to the, to the impact that we would have liked. It was quite traditional, a lot of classroom and a lot of dependence. So kind of you go learn when you're told to or invited to go do something. I guess not a different picture to many of us. Yep. And you know, as we got introduced to you guys, there was a big shift, at least from our perception, that seemed to be happening. You know, in your view, what has changed over the past few years? So I think we've got to come back to the business. So we're in, in fast-moving consumer goods. You know, Hellman's mayonnaise, Ben & Jerry's ice cream, we do fast stuff. And our industry is undergoing massive change. Um, you know, people talk about digital disruption. We feel that you know, each and every day. And so you know, the mission we're on is, is how do we enable our business for transformation and high performance? And that's what I basically say to my teams every kind of week is we're here for transformation and high performance. Um, and so that, that's the start of it. So how do you rethink learning um, to deliver that? So, so that's what the kind of the journey's been. And, and so that's a little about how do we get scale, how do we get impact, but also how do we deeply engage the human? So for while technology is, is a key part of the future and the disruption, a lot of the solution is in the human. How do we engage people deeply and personally in what they're doing? So trying to start with purpose, the individual's purpose um, is, is a really important part of it. So I think what we've been trying to do is to say, let's embed individual purpose, let's in equip people to own their learning, to own their skills so they can be the very, very best they can be. Yeah. That's, that's the mission. Perfect. And Marie, we'd love to hear from you. You know, how do you feel that you know, identifying your purpose plays into the individuals every day and their engagement with the things that you are providing? Well, I can start with it personally, because even we discussed it uh, last night, I think, over dinner. I even have my purpose statement right there on my profile, and it actually reminds me every day of what I'm doing right now is living my purpose right this second, talking to you and talking to everyone. That's part of my purpose. Yeah. So it's just a daily reminder where I want to be, what's my end game, basically. Mm -hmm. Although, And that's what we want to give to our learners, is this constant reminder of, what is actually that drives you? Not just your passion, but what drives you daily to come to work to, well, sound cliche, but get out of bed, uh, run to work or run to your, I don't know, home office and do what you do. And what skills you need to get to this destination, to get to the experience that you need, work experience, life experience, anything really. So it's, it's just the core of, of all the learning we do really. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think as you enable individuals to own their own development, you know, my first thought would be, how do you keep that in line? How do you align them to the strategy? You know, it's good to enable them, but how do you enable them in a guided way? So, so I think there's a couple of answers to that. One is, do you have to? Or to what degree do you need to? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, to, to a certain degree, I love something someone said earlier. I think it was, it was Barry of quoting this, the CEO of Airbnb. I want an organization of learners, not knowers. So to, I thought it was fantastic. I shall be stealing that. Um, <laughs> but, but, you know, so to, to a degree, does it really matter? Now, of course, to a degree, it does matter. So the way we do it is by 
trying to make sure that this, this connection of purpose from the company purpose, our purpose is to make sustainable living commonplace. Mm -hmm. That's why I get so excited about this company. We want to change the world um, by doing business. And so you make the chain from the, from the company's purpose to the individual purpose really as clear as you can. Mm -hmm. Then, in this, particularly in the learning space, you allow them to build their learning plans from their purpose. And then you also make it really clear to people what are the things that we really want them to learn about. I think that's been one of our learnings from the last year with, with you is... We, we open up the greed, it brings a single place to find everything, and then people go, this is really magnificent, what do you want me to learn again? <laughs> and, and so what we've been doing is, in the last few, few weeks and months, is launching pathways that we call power-up pathways, which are directly connected to our digital transformation. Um, so they begin with uh, an assessment, and, and people then know what it is they really need to focus on. But it's got to be an and-and. I'm trying to get this balance right of making it clear what people really need to learn, but not returning to the culture we've been trying to move away from, which is I'm, I'm sitting here waiting to be told what to do. Yeah. And I think that's a very, it, it sounds simple, you know, to guide someone in that moment. But what it's actually taken, as I've worked with you guys, is a lot of, I would, for lack of a better word, I think bravery in testing new ideas. And, and so I want you to talk to everyone here about how do you get both your teams and also those you know, that you're interacting with at the executive level to, to buy into testing new things and you know, being willing to try and maybe it will work and maybe it, it, mm. it was. How do, you, how do you get people into that modus of operating? Mm. So, so I think we're very lucky in the sense that the whole business is talking about experimentation. You know, the way that marketing is transforming in our industry is that you know, people are doing A-B testing all the time. Yeah, so you have a relationship with a consumer, and basically you try with one group of consumers this kind of interaction, and you test something different. So, so the business is trying to get that. So in a sense, we've got this blessing, which is a Unilever saying, skills transformation is absolutely critical. Um, I was on the phone this morning with our, our digital transformation officer, and he's saying, Tim, this is not about technology. The transformation of our business is about culture and people. So, so I feel nothing but kind of, in a sense, learning is front and center of what they want to do. So there is nothing as scary as that. So everything else seems doesn't need quite as much bravery, to be honest, um, <laughs> because I feel if we don't get it right, you know, we have the future of the business in our hands. <laughs> So that's one thing, experimentation, a sense that the business is really, you know, really needs us. And then you just test stuff out. And you know, Mash is doing a, a, a test at the moment with how do we find the people who are right on the leading edge of digital transformation? Because our industry is changing right now, week in, week out. And we can't sit in our global learning team and go, ooh, they must need that. Because we don't know what they need. So let's get them to tell us what they need by, and get them to create the learning. So we're doing an A-B test of you find some people on that leading edge, you offer them $1,000 and say, go, go learn something that you think will drive your performance and people like you, and then bring, create a piece of learning back and you find another group of people who you don't offer the money to, who don't know about the first group, you hope. Um, and, and, yeah, that's, you've got to keep them apart. And then you say, you're really wonderful. Create some learning. And you test those two things, and you see which one works. And you know, to be honest, I think the spirit is we're better off. We're, if both of them fail, we're still better off than we were before because we know something. Yeah, I love that. And I, I also really love how empowered Maria's team is in conducting those tests. And I think it would be helpful for everyone here to hear how your teams are structured. You know, as you're bringing technology in, what, what do you need to have in place to make it successful? Because technology is an empowering mechanism, but it is not everything. You know, it really requires people putting that together with the strategy. So can you talk about your role? Because I really do operate with you in a little bit different way than some of our other partners. So I'd love for you to share. Yeah, sure, I would love to. I remember yesterday someone said, show of hands, who in the company have a dedicated, well, dedicated resource to experiment and try new things. So I think I can say that to some extent, this is my role. So this is me, whoever wants to uh, talk about that more, uh, to experiment and try new things and exactly approach the whole degree, not as a tool, but really as a product, as, as a brand that we can sell to our customer, which is our learners in our way, in the learning team. So the way we structure it really, because we, we are very close, that we have a close partnership with degree and we do have, it's a very, it's take, as Kat mentioned before, it takes a lot of discipline to even sometimes go do boring things, like go through the whole file of things, that we, list of things that we want to do in terms of 
user experience in terms of tech or for content, how to want to improve it, what is again, always thinking of a learner as a customer and putting them in the place first, thinking, okay, what do they need to have this seamless experience there? We won't need to think twice, do I need to come back? Because at the end of the day, our main goal is to help them to answer that why for them. Why do I need to come back? Because it's, it was quite easy, to be honest, when I look back to a year ago to almost, what, like 60% of our business went uh, log in to Degreed for the first less than 90 days, I think, which is a huge amount of people if you see the size of uh, Unilever. But again, make them come back and make them come back and spend some quality time, that's another bigger challenge that we have. And this is where we come with experiments like Power Up Activists, identifying influencers, people who can be content creators, people like identifying different target audiences, who are my resistors, who are my mass majority, who are early adopters, and create those different ways how to really tackle each of those groups and what are the special techniques and tactics we can use to really reach those groups. And again, things like Christine was mentioning in her presentation yesterday, like we do experimentations with marketing campaigns, target campaigns for specific individuals, for functions, etc. Even, well, last example we had, we just hit our one year anniversary since we launched Degreed, and we did a blast of emails, uh, the anniversary giveaways that we give out some free license to people. And the the number of people who've actually applied for it and open a mass email, which always people think, well, mass email, no one reads those. Mm -hmm. And our click through for that was above 20%, which is enormous when you think of some, even our sometimes internal emails don't work that way like these do. So people do open those when, again, when they find the why for them, what's in for me to, to read that, to apply, to go back to degree, to read something, to share the content, because recommending content, again, that's another thing I'm sure a lot, well, raise of hands, who struggle with uh, making your people recommend content on degree? I can't see, but <laughs> <laughs> I would assume that's quite a few people, but that's another thing, it's a whole culture shift that Tim was talking about, because, yeah, to come in once, come in twice, it's maybe easy, but this, my own mindset shift, my own habit, it's not that easy. It sounds simple, but it's not that easy mm -hmm. to change the habit. So you, what you're hearing is, 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 which I find really exciting, is someone starting to talk about the digital marketing of learning. And so exactly as our marketeers are selling to the consumer, we have to sell to learning to them mm -hmm. uh, using the data that we get from the tool. So one of the things I did to come back to your question, if I may, that in, in the learning transformation was, I think I've heard other people talk about this too, was to create a team called Learning, Innovation and Standards uh, within which Masha works. And, and if you, you have to have that capability in a world of learning moving as fast as this. Yep. I love that. You know, and going back to just how do you get people to care, what I've seen you guys do very effectively is you get them to care because you're connecting to other pieces of the, the you know, strategy and connecting them to that through learning. Um, and so as we talk about just strategy in general, that's another thing that I really appreciate with working with you guys is you're always looking ahead. You're always thinking about what needs to happen in six months, what needs to happen in a year. You know, so as you look even beyond the next year, what does the future look like in three years at Unilever? What needs to have happened in the meantime to, to be where you know the business needs to be? So I, I think, yeah, I mean, part of the honest answer is I really don't know yet. Mm -hmm. But you, you, I find you have to trust your intuition. And part of that experimentation is trust, gut, gather data, repeat. And so I feel that it's clear that the tech landscape is moving away from single holistic program, you know, platforms into assembling all the things you particularly need, which I think will, will be fantastic for learning innovation and tech innovation. And so I think what I, what I see happening is ever closer um, relationship between learning and talent management 
um, and integrating those so that there's a seamless experience and my learning directly drives the, the job experiences that I get. I, I think seeing people bidding for gigs, bidding for jobs, being approached based on their skills, I think that we, we, we need there in about a year, I think. Then the thing I think we need really to come back to again because we've started, but it's not enough, is how you make purpose flow through all of that. My purpose is to leave lasting change for good. People should come hunt for me when there's a job about changing the world because I'm a total sucker for a please change this forever mission. Um, so I think how do we make purpose kind of live through all of that? I, I think that, that will be massive. So algorithms around enabling people's purpose through learning and through work experiences, if we crack that in a seamless way with a great user experience, that, that, that for me is the next really big nirvana. Yep, I love it. And, you know, tactically, as, as we look to the future, what are the enhancements to your team that you think would need to be in place to enable that? I would just say for me, if Tim was talking more about overall learning vision, my own vision would be to have the learning when people don't recognize it as a learning anymore. It's not an on top curriculum. It's not a priority 25 on their list. It's something that they recognize as, some, first of all, it's a must because, again, we're not talking about strategy 2030 anymore. There's just probably won't be even 2030. Who knows? So thinking more in sprints and how, what is the next few months going to be like? What's the other few months going to be like? And then think from that perspective, constantly asking for a feedback. How else can we make it even more seamless and better for you? Mm -hmm. And again, to help them stay always relevant, to have the seamless experience that it's super easy. They don't have to think twice. Do I come back or do I download an app? It shouldn't be even in their mind. It should be like come as a given. So that would be my answer. Yeah. <laughs> that, that focus on the individual you keep coming back to. And I think it's really beautiful. And even in your title, user experience manager, you know, that is something that is incredibly vital is putting ourselves in the shoes of the individual and how are they interacting with our systems every day and, and how does that interaction connect them to moving things forward, both themselves and, and for the enterprise. You know, so looking forward is one thing and is harder, but as you look back in time, you know, for the past two to three years, you know, if you were to meet Tim and Maria three years ago, what, what advice would you give to them about this moment? What could have made this moment better if you had been able to meet your current self? So I think um, if it's not too strange an expression to be at ease with my uneasiness um, because however much progress we make and I'm never happy and there's always more mm -hmm. and I'm totally uneasy. I'm, I'm, I'm on edge that I'm not going to enable the business I love to succeed as I want it to succeed. I, I know, you know, there's the anxiety thing that David talked about earlier and as much progress as we have made, I'm no... I'm no less anxious than I was at the start. So, and I think that's probably why we have a lot of fun together making great things happen, because we have that restlessness. Yeah. So I think learning to be at ease with the uneasiness. I love that. Mine probably would be just take risks or whatever, whatever works, just keep doing it, because it's working. And um, I think just also be able to challenge back when you hear a strategy or you think, okay, well, that's not holy grail. It might change, and it's okay to change it on the go sometimes. Some stra maybe a strategy or something you do short term or long term, it's okay to make adaptions or make a change. And also, um, probably just not be too focused on uh, results. We had this conversation with Tim because I did have my own maybe personal struggles because I'm very result oriented. You just have to see, and result has to be good. Mm -hmm. So probably focus more on the journey and the learning you get on the way because that's what makes the result even better when you really pay attention to what's happening in between and what are you learning on the go, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah I love that. Being present and appreciating yeah. everything that's happening in the meantime is a, a beautiful thing. You know, y you guys talk a lot about that experimentation and that really is something that is fairly rare. You know, and I think a lot of it is because you have such a tight integration with the other pieces of the organization. And so can you speak a little bit to that partnership and, and just how you're able to, one, foster that partnership and maybe repair it in the cases where it's not working as, as well as you mm. would like it to? 
So our, our view of the world is that the era of the organization, this kind of thing on an org map, is over. Um, and the future of, of organizations are networks, and the organization, organizing principle of the network is behavior. Um, and so you've got to learn the behaviors of how to, how to work together. And so with my, my partner in crime that, who looks after talent, we keep finding ourselves standing on the same bit of carpet and going, but we've got to try and do this. And, and you go, okay, great. Now we, now we work out how we, how we have the discussion. Uh, I'm half Dutch, he's fully Dutch. So the discussions are pretty robust. Um, and, and, you, and you have them, and you, but you're, sh you're motivated by shared purpose. Yeah. So I think shared purpose, and, you know, and we take that purpose to make sustainable living commonplace really seriously. It is the why of, of the business. And, and so within that, you appreciate that it's all about integrating and networking. And you go from there. And, and I was in, in our, visited our business here in North America uh, a couple of days ago, and we have conversations about who's going to create what, and, and you have a rough and tumble about their view and our view, and then you kind of go, right, let's go do this. I mean, yeah. And it does get ugly sometimes or, or difficult, but it's all in the name of the purpose. Yeah, and that constant reminder of the purpose, I think, is critical to that. You know, when we can get just caught up in the minutia of the daily and we're not thinking about the why behind what is driving our needing to be on that carpet fighting for what we believe in. Like, really what it is, is we're all trying to move forward mm. the same things. And if we can just call it back to that, and I think you guys do that so beautifully, both for me as an individual, what am I trying to do here, but also as a company, the things that you're trying to do for the world, you know, that, that allows you to align, I think, mm. a lot. And I see that across my every interaction with, mm. with each of you. Um, and what about for you, you know, as, as you guys are working with us often sprint to sprint, how are you bringing that back, you know, to your internal stakeholders to move things forward? Well, I think just a huge part of my job is to work with those stakeholders because they are all over the world. Those are teams who actually, me being in a global role, cannot implement even degree or new I don't know, something new around learning behavior or learning strategy to every country. That's why my big part of my job is to actually work with those people who do that on the ground and constantly check in with them, how can I help you really to make it better experience, to make it easier for you, to simplify your life because you're looking after some, well, some clusters are just really diverse and big in terms of languages, culture, anything really so how I can help you to make it better and I'm really willing to go extra mile to, to do that and I think when they see that they're not just being constantly asked to like oh well they just check in on us to see if I'm performing but when they see it as a I'm actually willing to help and this is my purpose really to help you to make it better that's when they start I think to recognize it and willing to cooperate more to give constant feedback to make it better together, the whole user experience, so. Perfect, I've, yeah. I, I love it. And my last very important question before we open it up to the audience is, what is your favorite Ben and Jerry's flavor? <laughs> <laughs> so my favorite is the Ben and Jerry's Witch, I just think is the most fantastic thing. Yeah, yeah a, con you know, a nice biscuit, I think you probably call it here, with ice cream in the middle, it is, it is f f superb, yeah. superb. You will be shocked. There is no Ben and Jerry in Russia. We've been talking to the our local business for years now. Can we just launch it, please? It's still well. We have other ice creams. It's all good, but yeah. But so beyond Ben and Jerry, because we have other portfolio of ice creams, it's just anything chocolate. Mint chocolate is my favorite one. <laughs> Chunky monkey, for those of you that want. Um, so at, at this point, you know, just an incredible group here that I cannot express enough, the partnership and, and the thought leadership that you exhibit. And, you know, it has been wonderful to work with and, and learn from you. And so I want to open it up to the audience here um, to ask, ask questions. There's some mics floating around. If not, just shout. Hello there. You guys are doing lots of awesome stuff, sounds like. Very cool. Uh, you mentioned your uh, power pathways and that you did an upfront diagnostic assessment. Just curious uh, how you're doing that. So, yeah, so it's not, it's not perfect yet. And a lot of what we're talking about is, is work in progress. Um, so, so the principle, and I, I learned this to your point about 
about learning. We've learned a lot from you, and, and I find the dialogue that we have really cool. And one of the things I learned um, from Degreed was this principle of we've got to shift away from learning professionals thinking that the goal is learning completed mm. and moving to its skill verified. That, for me, was an aha moment. I remember the phone call and thinking, that's genius. Yeah. So that's why we built these upfront assessments. They're not perfect, so, but they're built in, in Easy Generator. Um, they're plugged directly into the pathway. You start with, with doing the assessment. You then find out whether you've got to do the learning, um, and then off you go, and then you come. You know, if you fail, you get a video from me saying, sorry, you failed. Uh, go do the learning. <laughs> uh, and if you succeed, you get a video from me saying, well done, you passed. Go to the next pathway. Um, so so it's, it's, that's how it's done. It's not perfect. What it doesn't do yet is to say, right, you failed on this, this, and this. Off you go. But we're working on it. It's, it's an experiment. But my, the goal I'm setting the team is every piece of learning begins with an assessment because if they pass the assessment, they don't have to do that bit of learning. They should move on. You know, while, while people are thinking about the questions that they have, I think you know, speaking more to that A-B test that you're running and how you're enabling curators outside of those that sit inside learning and development, like, can you speak a little bit about that, just how you're enabling subject matter experts ac across the organization? So most of the, we have 600 plus pathways, I think, now. And most of those and most of the 1,400 groups have been created by people who aren't in HR or in learning. Uh, I think that's really, really important. We simply don't have all the knowledge. Um, and we're never going to have all the knowledge. Um, so, so, it's, so it's important to do that kind of enablement. There is some governance, um, but it's as light as possible, and we'll get it as light as we can. So all, all my functional learning teams know who those subject matter experts are. Um, so it's a matter of transferring to them the ability to create pathways and to use them. Uh, and some of them have embraced it enormously. Our, our um, consumer and market insight team have even created their own campaign about Bob, um, who's this kind of learner who needs, to, um, who needs to learn fast, and he's the character that they use to activate the particular things that they need. So they build pathways that Bob has to do. Uh, Bob travels around the world. Uh, he's, a, he's a physical puppet. Um, he moves around the world. He pops up in different places. Um, and and so, so transferring that ownership does give this enormous boost of energy. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, it's about opening up that, that kind of possibility. I would add to that that also help people to bring stereotypes that create in your own learning is something very, very time consuming, boring, or it has to, you have to plan it ahead for a few months, which is not at all true because we give them the right tools. We give them tools to create their own content, animation videos, the, the cool new feature in degree where everyone can record their own video just sitting in front of, I was actually doing it the other day, just standing on my balcony walking around with my laptop, which not a safe, from safe <laughs> perspective, not the Talk best. Talk about moment, that later, <laughs> But again, just keep reminding them that actually creating content, it's not that much easier than create content on Instagram or on Twitter or any other social media, because it shouldn't be that complex. It's a win-win because it takes you very little time to create content. Plus, even if you create something, create something enormous, well, chances are no one's really going to probably look at it because people are looking for bite-sized content and micro-learning these days. They're not going to look into five-hour, I don't know, course if they're standing or picking up their daughter from a soccer practice. That was someone's example before. So we need to do something qu uh, quickly, but it's something really tangible and practical in this two-minute video me talking about not just blah, blah, but really saying about, okay, this is what I learned, this is what you guys should try, this is what worked for me, just some practical tips. So we try to create it more and more for people. Yeah, I love that. And I think what gives people the freedom to, to create, again, is just that alignment to overall strategy. Yeah. You know, that as they are feeling, truly what I see is empowerment across the entire population. They are empowered in their purpose and how that purpose connects to the larger. And that kind of takes some of that fear away from yeah. the, you know, courage to create. You yeah. know, because putting things out there, it, it is a moment where you are being vulnerable, but that vulnerability kind of goes away as you are connecting it to the big why. Yeah. You know, so I just truly applaud you guys for what you are doing internally to, you know, really move the world forward and helping people and everyone connect to their purpose. So thank you for taking the time and, and sharing with everyone here today. Well, thank you thank so you. much for having us and thank you.